Gee. God, that doesn't sound good, does it? Holy moly, I wish you could see my gear knob right now. It's just... Behind me is a high mileage 2003 Renault Clio that I recently bought. In fact, Dan took this in part exchange against our Mercedes B-Class that was also a part exchange, and he gave just 150 pounds for it. I managed to sell this car within an hour for a profit. Let's check it out and see what we got. Right, so they have it. It looks every bit of £150, doesn't it? Generally speaking, I don't think you can go too wrong when you're paying £150 for a car. But if you are going to buy a car, I absolutely recommend you do a vehicle score check. It's quick and easy to use, and best of all, it's completely free to check a car. So let's input our reg. Kilo, whiskey, 03, Juliet, Yankee, Sierra get a score. It's now going to score our car from 1 to 999. Based on its MOT history, its mileage, its age, etc. to tell us whether this is a good car or not. Unsurprisingly, ours is 235. Not great. Let's pop down to our score insights and it'll tell us why it's come up with this score. Only one on the good side. Average yearly mileage is perfect. Bad bits, no current MOT. Over 20 comments on recent MOTs. Over two foul comments on recent MOTs. And vehicle is over 10 years old. Let's pop down to our MOT history and have a look at that. So the last one was on the 28th of October 2022, which is actually today's date. So I thought it ran out today. I think it does. We're still going to take it out for a spin. It passed then, but it had advisories for windscreen damage, but not adversely affecting the driver's view, an oil leak, but not excessive, and near side rear tyre worn. The last failure it had was back in 2021. It had a broken offside front coil spring, offside headlap insecure, and near side front coil spring fractured or broken. As I say, I only paid £150 for this car. I wasn't expecting a lot out of it. I'm not going to pick it to pieces as if to say it's rubbish for £150 because it can't be bad. You know, there's no level of crappiness this car could be that would make it not worth £150 in scrap value. My checks on this vehicle were not extensive. I don't think I needed to. But if you are going to hand over your hard-earned cash to buy a car privately or from a dealer, it is always worth doing a history report, finding out whether there's any hidden secrets in that car's history. Maybe a little prang that's been repaired and you don't know about. That's where Vehicle Score Salvage Plus report and the Ultimate Report come in, so you can check that car's history completely. If you use the Ultimate Report, you can check whether this car's been completely scrapped before, whether it's been stolen, whether it's been used as a taxi, whether it's been written off and repaired, all things you'd want to know before you buy a car because it is going to affect its value. It's super easy to do, as you've probably seen in previous videos, only £8.97, but if you use my code SHIFTINGMETAL15, you get 15% off, making it just £7.62, and that is about the best value vehicle history check in the UK currently. Can you afford to not do a £7.62 check when thousands of pounds are at stake when you're buying a used car? That said, let's have a look around this thing and see what we actually got for our expensive dinner out for two people. Our headlights could definitely do with a buff, as Matt from High Peak Quarters would say. There wouldn't be too much to get involved with them. The kind of damage from the UV hasn't gone too deep. I expect they've been repaired before, and it wouldn't take much to bring them back to looking pretty good. This wing has got a crack in it. Of course, these are going to be plastic wings, being a Renault Clio and it's worn through the paint there. Something strange has happened. Probably had a little bump in there. Don't know what that was. Maybe that's where it like sat in a garage or something, but like I say, they're plastic wings, so it's they're pretty forgiving to so have cracked it and done an awful repair on it. Something's happened there. Our front wheel, it's got an aftermarket wheel trim. These are not the originals. And we have got an Arrow Speed AS HPO catchy. Uh, we've got about four or five mil of tread on there and yeah, tyre seems in pretty good condition. Coming down this side of the car, what's jumping out at me? We've got a few dents and scratches on the door here, but it is 20 years old and the mileage. We haven't even discussed the mileage yet. I do quite like when we got an older, cheaper car like this. Everyone guess in the comments. Have a look around the car with me. You know what I've paid for it. Don't cheat and use a kind of vehicle score check that will tell you that history or that sort of thing. Just guess how many miles do you think this car has done judging by its condition? Nothing too much to report on this side. Again, a few little scuffs. It just wants a seriously good valet. It's just kind of a lot of moss and things going on in there. We've got a slightly more perished looking tyre here, which is not an arrow speed. That's a B, a B-O-T-D, maybe? Um, I can't read because it is quite perished. 
not badly it's not badly cracked but you can just see that you know that the rubber's looking a bit old again reasonable tread i'd say on average about three mil a tread across that we've got a bit of a scuff going on around here that's been masterfully touched in coming around this corner so a little bit of a bump there but you know nothing major certainly not on this you're not going to bat an eyelid are you um again valet this is what this needs desperately which would brighten this up no end a new set of plates because these are looking faded again we just freshen it up make it look 10 times better we've got plenty of moss and things growing around the boot and even on the aerial but you know it doesn't take a lot to clean the car does it and get it looking 10 times better a few more rubbish touchings my top tip when it comes to scratches and things like this if you can get the paint perhaps dip it on a pin and just try and dip it into that scratch if it overflows you've done too much and then you're gonna end up brushing it like this and it just makes it look 10 times worse you've taken what is a small scratch and made it bigger like here's an area of damage now that is five times the size of the original try not to fall into that pitfall get a pin dip it in some paint and dip it into the thing there it's going to make it look better it's going to take away the color difference but brushing it on is just going to make it look more obvious this side of the car tells a bit more of a story doesn't it we've got quite a little boff here um that one had some filler in it interestingly so perhaps they've done this once before had it repaired and then they've done it again because you can see how that whole section's flaked out well they wouldn't do that if that was the original wing again picasso has been at it brushing in some paint here just makes it look more obvious in my opinion if you just dabbed in some color into that little scratch it would have looked better so they've gone all the way through here and up like that so yes not ideal but inconsequential on a car like this right what have we got i think we've got the same as what we had on the other side again looking a little perished and worn out but still reasonable tread on there three or four mil coming up the side here a bit of a prang in the door there that's just from a car parking ding isn't it someone's probably opened their door onto this i imagine which is upsetting but you know does it detract from the quality of this car no coming down this side this front wing at least is looking better there's not too many curb marks we can look for on our alloy wheels because we don't have alloy wheels but even these wheel trims have been curbed a little bit but that's not the end of the world so now we have got another arrow speed as hpo1 is what it was a pair of those on the front and a pair of whatever you said it was on the back botd or something a bit more tread on the front here maybe four or five mil um, and these look definitely like the better tires so Good job there on the front really come around this side again i think we can see where this has probably been repaired before can we see some light kind of swirly scratch marks i'm not sure these look absolutely gorgeous buffed up i don't know how well it really shows on camera but again that freshen up new plate that's kind of cracked and just looking a bit worn out jb autos shout out to you yeah on the whole for what it is not bad at all really is it and check this out not necessarily always a good thing on a clio i have to say we've got a sunroof these are notorious for leaking on clios um but i don't know if this one to be electric or manual try to think this this could be a manual one that'd be interesting wouldn't it you don't see many of those these days so let's have a look inside just the one key which has seems to have lost its little rubber cover still does have like a kind of condom type thing inside there our central locking does actually work that is a miracle very rarely do they work on these to be honest just remember that so far it's not been too bad and i think it probably gets a little bit worse as we go in here because this has definitely been a smoker's car you can tell by all the tobacco lying around it's absolutely everywhere it funnily enough it doesn't really smell that strongly of stale smoke because i don't think it's had a chance to go stale yet because it's obviously very actively being smoked in tobacco is absolutely everywhere and you can definitely smell smoke in here but as i say it's not stale smelling just yet it's quite fresh i guess but yeah i think the driver of this was quite a heavy smoker could have done with a good valet but you know i think this chap knew his mot was running out and he was a bit desperate for another car i think there's a few issues with it. oh i've just noticed look check that out obviously his gear gator was coming out so siliconed it in having just filmed a video with a slk where they'd siliconed a bumper back on silicone sealer in the automotive world seems to be making a real resurgence that's coming back into fashion for sure let's have a little look in the boot do our gas straps work mm, they do if you get it up all the way to the top well this is the cleanest part of the car to be fair uh, i think we're missing our little bit of cardboard or wood or whatever goes in the boot but we do have full spare wheel it's by far the best tire in the entire car 
and our jack, etc., all where it should be. I bet if you looked, you probably couldn't buy a whole spare wheel kit, etc., for uh, 150 quid online. Right, so let's hop in and see what's going on with this car. Let's have a look, see if we've got any paperwork first. Right, so we've got a V5. How many owners have we had? Only five, which is not too bad. There does seem to be quite a lot of paper here, so we might have some service history. Let's see what we can find. Right. What have we got with the V5? We've got a tax notice. We won't be needing that anymore, so let's throw that on the floor. Let's put the V5 out of the way. Maintenance record, that is exactly what we want. So, what have we got in here? It's definitely original. It's got the Renault kind of sticker inside the front door there. Camden Corporate Fleet Services Limited was the first one, so fleet lease type car. Then it was Renault Minute Enfield, so a London car. What have we got? One, two, three, four in the service book last being at Renault Minute. That was at 65,867. And to give you a clue on the mileage, that was in 2009. 66,000, basically. Renault East London, uh, 2009. So similar sort of mileage. Some work here carried out in 2018 at Causeway 4x4. Well, that's a local 4x4 kind of repair centre that's just up the road from us, right by the uh, Bridgewater BCA, actually. So what do they have? done MOT work, MOT work, drop links, etc. Does it say anything? Here's some Euro car park stuff about servicing. That's in 2019. So it's not going to tell us the mileage. Triple QX, fully synthetic, engine oil, Bosch oil filter, 2019, 2020. Bosch oil filter, Bosch air filter, triple QX, fully synthetic, engine oil. So that was three years ago. Again, no mileage because it looks like owner completed type of stuff. Uh, MOT slip. Jesus, there's a ton of paperwork. This is going back to Enfield. So in 2010, mileage was 74,664. When he had what looks like a CV boot, a gator, they've charged him a cable tie. £1.16 for one cable tie. That's stingy, isn't it? I imagine it was a metal one, but all the same. Causeway 4x4 alternator. That was in 2015. Paperwork's all over the place here. In 2015, the mileage was on 111,416. This should all be helping you get closer to your guess on the mileage. 2013, the mileage was on 105,744. And that was at GR Auto Services Limited in Bristol, Wilbearing. Vehicle scan, no engine codes found, full brake check. Doesn't say anything about service though. Frankly, we could be here all day trying to get through all these bits of paper that aren't organized. Isn't it interesting how some people will keep their paperwork and they'll keep it like this versus say, the very nice chap that we bought the V90 from, uh, the cross country thing that was absolutely lovely and everything was in order, laminated. That is a proper Volvo owner. That is just, some people say that's a bit anal. I love it. I am so happy to see that if someone's taken care of their car and gone to the lengths of laminating the service paperwork so it doesn't get all mangled up like this and stuffed and out of order and whatever. I'm I'm all for it. Power to you. A car, a car should come with a laminator, really. Yes, yeah, so we also have original books, etc. It's pretty impressive to see, isn't it, on a 20-year-old little Clio. So... We do have some service history. I imagine if I went through that too much more, it would give the game away in regards to the mileage. So let's have a look under the bonnet, see how things are looking under there, and then we'll take it out for a spin. All right, here we are. It's handy they actually wrote 1.2 litre on their 16 valve, because I was thinking to myself as I opened this, I didn't check. I didn't know whether it was a 1.2 or a 1.4. There it is. Thank you, Renault, for writing it on your very wobbly engine cover. Battery looks... I mean, it looks like the right sort of size for this car, but it actually looks quite lost in this well here. So that's interesting. Coolant bottle is looking pretty manky, isn't it? But let's have a look at our oil first. Oh God, that's, yeah, that is quite thick and sticky. It's still brown. It's not that black. I know it's a petrol car, but I can say it's just kind of very tacky and could definitely do with a change, I would say in my uneducated opinion. Coolant bottle, let's have a look in here. You can see there's some good color to the coolant that is in there, but you can also see all this, which, you know, you might think could be an oil in there at some point. And it might have been, but I would say it's quite clean in there. 
It wouldn't be beyond the realms of capability considering we know this thing's been at least 111,000 miles on it. This has had a head gasket go before and it's been changed. Engine mount's looking a bit rusty, a little bit kind of perished, but you know, I don't really know how to check that other than driving it. So we'll see when we go out. Top mounts look all right for a Clio. I don't know whether there'll be much play because these suffer from play in the top mounts as far as I'm aware and people tend to undo them and put like rubber grommets in I think to kind of bulk them out again but I think although is that sat proud should that I don't know you'll know better than I do this just shows my kind of amateurish mechanical knowledge really check the dipstick well it's got plenty of oil in there doesn't look too bad doesn't look bitty but yeah it definitely wants a good service I'd say right so Let's fire it up and take it out for a spin. Right, let's get out in this thing before it's completely dark. Oh, I forgot to say, it is a manual sunroof. I'm here on a Sunday and Jason turned up and we started talking about a sunroof. And I said, is it a manual? As he had his head in the car and he said it is, but he didn't have the nerves to open it previously. And I think the same, you know, I said that they leak, I think best left alone. If it's not leaking now, cause it doesn't smell damp in here, I'm better off leaving that uh, sunroof alone. Let's get some lights on cause it is getting a bit darker. We have a flashing engine management light and the car does feel a little juddery. I think we might be running on three cylinders or at least sporadically running on three cylinders. Oh yeah. We do have almost half a tank of fuel, which is about, I'll say that, it's gone down to about a quarter of a tank now. We must have a bit of a lazy fuel gauge. So there is a, a bit of a judder going on. It's not, misfiring horrendously bad there's definitely something going on there it's quite a, ooh, quite a few suspension knocks which you would have just oh again i'm not knocking this as you know what do i i get a lot of comments of like what do you expect for 150 pounds some people are really stupid i think you're missing the point i'm just letting you see what 150 pound part exchange car looks like so we might want some ball joints and things on this always amazes me when i'm you know taking these cars out after we've part exchanged them and given them someone how long were they driving it around like this before they decided they would part exchange and get something a bit better probably safer regardless how did i sell this and make a profit well adrian our mechanic who i'm sure you will have seen in our bm weekly videos if you haven't check out the latest one here and he has been on the hunt for a very cheap car for his daughter, whose car exploded. I, um, I don't know if it exploded. I, I honestly can't remember if she crashed it or it threw the cam belt or something. All I know is that he's been looking to buy a car for her and this came up. It's got a limited budget, understandably. And this came up, we bought it in for 150 quid. Jeez. God, that doesn't sound good, does it? Holy moly, I wish you could see my gear knob right now. It's just... Holy macaroni. Yeah, he suggested 250 quid, and I said, yeah, fine, have it. You know, as is, if he wants to sort out the bits and pieces on it. I don't know if you're going to see it in here because it's so dark, but... Jeez, God, this could be the worst car I've ever owned in the world. Anyway, in fact, he said, how much do you want for it? And he said, Jason has suggested that 250 would be fair. And I said, well, that's fine if you want it. And you, you know, you can have it for 250 quid as is. I haven't got to do anything with it. I'm now starting to think that, you know, 200 would be more fair. Maybe 150 would be more fair. He knows what he needs to do to it to be fair. He knows that it, uh, he's put it in the workshop on Friday. It's now Sunday I'm in making this video, dedicated to the cause. That's just a little, if it's not worth a subscription, if you're not already subscribed, I'm here on a Sunday when I could be with my family making videos for you all. Don't forget to like the video as well. Thank you very much. He's looked it over, he knows it needs a coil pack. That's why we have our flashing engine management light because it is misfiring. I think it's, if it's not, a four in one type thing he knows which one it, it he needs to change uh he needs an mot obviously uh it ran out today or yesterday depending on how you read it and i think he said it needs some ball joints oh and he said i think it said that the little brakes are rubbish as well so 
realistically, he is going to be spending a few quid on parts, which luckily I'm a, I'm a nice boss. I let them buy them on our account at our heavily discounted prices and obviously Adrian's the man to do the work himself. Yeah, I might just let him have this at cost now that I've driven it. I felt like, you know, it's only fair you get a little drink out of having a car and selling it on, but this is, uh, this is a piece of crap. So I don't really want to take profit from Adrian on this. It will fix up all right. It'll be a decent car considering the mileage which we would get to at the very end of this video stay with me we're getting there i don't want to honey dick you but i need to i need to get the view somehow yeah, what a machine what was i saying um yeah gearbox seems okay other than this sort of poltergeist exorcism thing that seems to be happening look at it go look at it go i don't know if that's related to the misfire or that's, that's gearbox related. I mean, I was gonna say the gearbox seems good. Which it does, it's smooth, there's no whining. You know what Clio's gonna be like. Uh, Renault gearbox is made of cheese. I think he might have said it needed an engine mount as well. So. What a bit of kit. At uh, this, uh, on, frankly, at this stage, I don't know whether Adrian having test driven this and put it on the ramp or whatever, whether we should be calling someone to nominate him for dad of the year for sorting this out for his daughter or childline, frankly, because yeah, the less said the better. Just kidding, Adrian. Adrian's an avid watcher of these videos and we all think you're doing a very nice thing, buying your daughter a car so she can get about with the grandkids and things, which is why I'm not going to take that hundred pound profit, but I'm going to leave it in the title. If this might be like a clickbaity type title of I bought this car and made a profit immediately. Maybe I'll say I turned down a profit. It's starting to smell quite hot as well. Do the fans work? They do. At least he hasn't got to buy a fan blower resistor. Oh God, now it really stinks. It just smells like... <sighs> Is that hot gearbox oil? Is it clutch? It's probably clutch from where I've been letting the gearbox thrash around like it's possessed. Uh, I probably shouldn't have done that, but hey ho, not my problem now. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't put that in, Toby. So if you made it this far into the video, thank you for continuing to watch and for bearing with me. I'm going to tell you now, the mileage is 159,829. I mean, Minor maintenance parts aside, the fact that this sounds and rattles, as our mechanic Steph would put it, like two skeletons shagging on a tin roof, it's quite rattly, um, it seems okay. So, um, yeah, I don't think I will be taking it. I'll be turning down a profit. I think that's what the title of this video is going to be. I'm going to turn down a profit because I'm going to let Adrian have it for £150 because, you know, I think I've already got a seat in hell. But if I was to take £100 profit off him off this to fix it up so that his daughter can drive his granddaughter around, you know, I'd probably have the express ticket, wouldn't I? And, you know, profit's a dirty word to most people anyway, so... Hey ho. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, you've enjoyed the video and you haven't pressed the button already, please do hit the like button, it'll really help me out. Don't forget you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And if you want to see an update on this, when Adrian's got it all sorted for his daughter, make sure you follow me on Instagram, it's shifting underscore metal. And other than that, I will see you next time.